It's Sunday the 31st of July and it's a lovely day down on the plot. Um, I was here yesterday um, but I didn't um, I didn't record anything. Um, we uh, got down here yesterday specifically to uh, slice up um, to uh, slice up some scaffold boards. Um, I'll take you down there and show you in a minute. Uh, one of my uh, plot neighbours, Alex Oleg, um, brought down his um, his uh, skill saw. And one of the um, neighbours who backs onto the allotments um, gave us electricity. So we were able to rip down the boards uh, to the sizes that we wanted. So I'm making um, beds of 3.9 metres by 1600, which is just under 13 foot by 5, um, and four beds of uh, 3.9 metres by 1300, which is just under 13 foot by 4. I'm going to get cracking on that soon. Um, I, I, I sort of see it as um, a way of getting rid of a couple of problems that we've been having. Uh, number one, the uh, the wood chip, the the wood chip uh, experiment um, so far hasn't worked. And that's my telephone, so I'll stop this and I'll come back. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. Um, where was I? Yeah, so, so we ripped down all the wood for the uh, for the beds, and um, I'm still going to use the uh, the wood chips, but I've got to have enough soil and compost above uh, the um, the water table, uh, I think, for it to work properly. Um, at the moment, it, it's it's just stagnant underneath. It's it's totally anaerobic. Um, and the roots just aren't growing they're just constantly in, in almost like a, a sort of just like running them in a bath of water so um, so they're not growing roots they're not doing particularly well some things aren't doing too bad uh, it seems that um, the the Brussels sprouts have uh, uh, taken their roots down quite deep and um, they seem to be doing okay um, some of the brassicas are doing okay the, the cauliflowers they just blew when they were, you know, like this size. Um, and I'll show you those um, in a minute. So yeah, so it's, it's a Sunday morning now and uh, I just came down just to uh, take a, a couple of um, buckets of potatoes, because um, my wife's a bit short spuds. Um, drop off uh, a hoe that I bought, get some um, weed killer for my paths at home and uh, do a quick plot tour. That's what we'll do now. Okay, so this is my first videoed potato reveal of the year. I have a bucket of kestrel, regular kestrel. Um, go and get my plastic bag and we'll get on with it. Lot of scab.
can't see it. I'm pretty pleased with that. This one is quite scabby, but um, the rest of them seem okay. They're not huge, but uh, when the blight hits, the blight hits. Okay, second bucket. Okay, so these are also, uh, this one and the one previously, both planted on the uh, 25th of March. And three seed potatoes. Looks like there's a few in here as well. Wow. I've never eaten a kestrel before. Um, I certainly like the look of them. If they're good, I'll certainly grow them again. size. Yuck. Mushy seed potato. Mushy seed potato. And there's the third one.
Not bad. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Okay, it's very, very bright today, so excuse me if we get shadows and stuff. Leaks that we put in uh, uh, last week, they're doing okay. Um, I know everybody's got their own way of, uh, of planting leeks, so we tend to top and tail them. So we'll uh, we'll cut down some of the uh, uh, the roots and snip off the tops. I don't know what the difference is. Um, they're certainly easier to plant when you top and tail. Um, whether they grow any differently, just not sure. But anyway, so sweet corn. Uh, so we've got some sweet corn up the top in the wood chip that uh, I'll show you. It's actually quite interesting uh, what's happened to that now. But um, here we uh, planted a second second batch because we love corn and we want some. So there you go. Now over here, there's a couple of buckets of uh, carrots. They seem to be doing okay, actually. Now these tomatoes we we took from the uh, the waterlogged wood chip area and put them in here and they've they've just taken off really um, they're doing really really well um, they're putting on lots of new growth um, that one's a little bit sickly still but, uh, but certainly the rest of them seem to be doing okay spring onions they'll be ready soon and. Celery's okay, although we've lost one plant down there. We have squashes. This I find quite interesting because um, we've got two varieties. The, um, the far end, the winter squash, and this end of the summer squash. Now, I don't really know what the difference is except that look at this now I've got massive hands and that is massive and there's a few others um, dotted around here then here and there but they're all off the winter squash which which I, I don't really get because I would have thought summer squash would be um, earlier I mean yeah, look there's one down there but that's actually running off the winter squash. I have seen uh, one or two uh, female flowers uh, with uh, some swellings behind on the uh, on the summer squash. They look like butternut to me, so I think that's what we're going to get. Um, but they're way way behind. Yeah, courgettes. We took a load of these yesterday. Um, If you can see, oh, something's in the way. You come around the other way. These yellow ones are lovely. We took a lot of them yesterday. Swede, um, sprayed with. Uh, Dipel and netted them from the uh, pigeons. They seem to be doing okay. Um, I don't know what we're going to get. We'll, we'll wait and see. But it doesn't look too bad at the moment. The uh, <laughs> this is interesting. This is the uh, spinach, and it grew tiny and then just went straight to seed. Don't know why that happened. Uh, shock of transplant, maybe, not sure. But the perpetual spinach, this looks absolutely fantastic. I think I'm going to cut some of this today and take it home. Uh, we make a, it's a traditional Cypriot dish actually. It's, uh, it's made with um, these leaves and with black eyed beans. And you boil the black eyed beans, well, you soak them first boil them and uh, when they're just starting to get soft you put a load of this stuff in um, 
and then you just serve it with uh, olive oil and lemon on the top and it's great with some nice crusty bread love that stuff and uh, I'm gonna pick some of this so my wife can make some for me garlic yeah it's had it now it's uh, full of rust and uh, we'll be taking that out next weekend I think next Saturday I guess the onions on this side they're starting to go over so we'll be uh, easing them up we didn't really get very much this year the main onion bed was this one here and um, in the wood chip they're just tiny and doing bugger all there's the uh, tomatoes some of which we moved onto that first bed and actually interestingly enough let's go into the uh, tunnel and I'll show you what's going on there so cauliflowers look at this horrible useless no good to man nor beast and it's like that all the way along this side and then as we get to the end some of the brussels are there and they're, they're doing quite good uh, in fact if I come over onto this side there's three plants here that one there that one and that one that are doing particularly well if I take you down Purple Brussels. Jewelry's still out on those. Got some cabbage in between. It's not doing particularly great. And uh, here we've got some uh, purple spray and broccoli. It doesn't seem to be doing too bad either. Mind you, um, all the cauliflower started off looking okay like that. And then uh, all of a sudden the leaves started going purple and dropping off stunted and just didn't do anything so we'll wait and see but that's where we are in the uh, brassica cage at the moment okay those tomatoes gone got some nice lettuce bolted there. Um, been taking um, beetroot on a regular basis. That stuff is lovely. Um, the way that, uh, that we do it is uh, we, we boil it until it gets soft, peel off the uh, skin, you can say peel off, you just rub it off with your thumb um, and all of the, uh, the stalks come away and the roots come away as well just let it cool, uh, chop it up into chunks, add um, olive oil, some finely chopped garlic, a little bit of um, cider or red wine vinegar, salt um, and some finely chopped parsley and it's absolutely delicious. Parsnips are doing okay. Um, we filled in uh, a lot of the gaps and most of the stuff seems to have taken. Strawberries are all good. Um, not producing anything now, but uh, we've uh, dotted in the gaps uh, with runners. Now, here we go. Look at this. This is the really strange thing. These are really stunted, but some of them actually got some cobs on. I, I don't know what they're going to come to, um, but yeah. Look, really strange. Now I don't know if um, if you know they seem to be growing taller and, and greener as well. I don't know if this is because the ground has started to dry up, and um, um, as a result, the clay underneath is starting to crack and maybe easing some of the water away. Really not sure, but you know it's. Uh, it's certainly it's certainly good to see. I don't, I don't know if we'll ever get anything to eat off this, but um, but the fact that it's doing what it's doing, I find quite interesting. Okay. So 
So, run of beans on this side. And actually, they don't seem to be doing too bad um, in this uh, in this waterlogged soil. On the other side, these are Bellotti beans. They actually seem to have um, quite a few on them. Look at, look at that colour. Not too bad at all. I mean, you know, I have to say, they don't look particularly strong. They look a little bit frail, but um, if they continue, we've, you know, we've got flowers on the run of beans as well, then, you know, we should get something to eat from that. Down here, we have our uh, dwarf French beans. And again, you know, shock horror, they looked so sick and unlikely to do anything, and all of a sudden they started picking up, and again, this could be because the ground underneath is drying up and we've had we've had some really really good weather uh, when I say good weather I mean you know sunny and warm um, so yeah definitely not going to give up with the wood chips but just put the wood chips on uh, on top of the soil in a raised bed instead and finally over here the uh, the peas and we've had uh, we've had a ton of these one thing um, I'm really not keen on, and I'm actually so glad my wife didn't um, didn't pod them, shell them, shell the pods. Um, and I did it. Is uh, that we've got this uh, sort of uh, I don't know if it, what they call it, whether it's called pea weevil or something like that, but it, it actually looks like a little tiny caterpillar um, that gets inside the pods and uh, burrows around uh, in the peas, which I really find quite disgusting. Um, find it very difficult to squash them with my hands and yep, let me uh, bring you over here and show you my pile of scaffold boards um, now what you can't see is that uh, within there we've, um, we've cut up um, all of the side pieces for the beds so next week I've got to get some uh, wood preserver first but um, what I want to do is uh, just assemble some of the beds and just put them in positions where we haven't really got anything growing and that's going to be on that side that very first tomato bed um, the onion bed and the second tomato bed so I'm not going to take take the stuff. Well, I'll take the first. I'll take the tomatoes out. Actually, certainly out the second bit anyway. Um, but I'll just put them in position, and then what I'm going to do is um, fill it up with um, the compost that we're or compost manure mix that we're taking from the um, uh, from the potato buckets, and uh, then make a decision on uh, whether I need to uh, order some more topsoil worm castings um, you know or whatever I, I want to fill them up quickly I'm not going to do this over years I, I was thinking originally that you know it was a great idea to uh, um, to, to use the compost from the buckets because if you're doing sort of 40 45 buckets a year that's uh, you know 30 litre at a time that's 1200 litres but but actually that's that's not really a lot of, um, of compost um, not when you've got a big raised bed that's nine inches tall, so I think I'm going to have to get some bulk um, organic material in. Anyway, that's the update, 30th of July. Um, if you're watching, thank you. Um, like, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. And um, I'll give you an update soon. Oh, actually, and before I go, I've got to show you this. This is unbelievable. This is like the most gigantic sweet corn I've ever seen in my life. It is absolutely huge. If I stand up against it and put my arm up as far as I can reach, I still don't get to the top. Now, you know, I'm five foot 11. 
and I've got a pretty long um, arm span. Now this stuff is absolutely enormous. I did take a photo yesterday of um, my friend Assad, whose plot this is, with him standing in front of it, so I'll post that photo just after this, just so that you can see, um, you know, against uh, the scale of a human being, how big this really is. And just bear in mind, he's about, he's probably about five foot eight, I think. Anyway, that's all from me. Cheers. Bye-bye.